There is only one day left in the Bassmaster Classic. One. 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 One fish. One buy. Just one fish to make your career can change one man's life in the Bassmaster's Classic. Yeah! Oh my goodness, I'm going to start a day. The one angler to be crowned 2007 Bassmaster Classic Champion. It is a beautiful day, a beautiful day for fishing, especially when it's the number one day in all of pro bass fishing. Finals day, championship day of the Bassmaster Classic 2007. Take a look at our launch point right there, Paradise Point Marina, Lay Lake, Birmingham, Alabama. Take a look at the conditions, the air temperature, very nice up there in the 50s, water in the low 50s, the wind's pretty steady, forecast is for overcast skies, sun, intermittent, the beautiful, beautiful fishing about to get started here on this most important day, and when it's all over, one man will stand atop the world of fishing ready to collect all the rewards we'll talk about that i'm tommy sanders along with mark zona as you look at those conditions is it a beautiful day for final fishing? day of the Bassmaster classic yeah. man you cannot find better conditions for our anglers today we've got mild temperatures mild more than anything we had a warm night and overcast skies the fish will be roaming they will be very aggressive this morning all right so many stories working today set up by the action on day number two take a look at it kevin van dam leads the bassmaster classic entering this final day kbd trying to become only the second angler to win three classic titles he was one of only three anglers to improve his weight day two over day one alabama native gerald swindle not fishing today he's been disqualified qualified for boat operation because of this action right here. I just want everybody here to know I didn't cheat. I didn't try to cheat. I wasn't trying to gain an edge. I made a simple judgment there. And Terry McWilliams, Federation angler, enters the final day with a good chance to become only the second amateur angler to win the Bassmaster Classic. McWilliams is in ninth place. Take a look at our leaderboard right now. The action underway out there on Lay Lake on this all-important day. Kevin Van Dam, he's hanging on to that lead right there. Skeet Reese in second place. Terry Scroggins, Boyd Duck at the Alabama hopeful. Man, we got a great lineup. That here. being said, something we're going to need to watch for all day long today. Kevin Van Dam really made up a lot of ground on day two. So basically, anybody still in the top 25 can pull this tournament out. These guys are looking to upgrade most of them. And we've got 25 anglers on this final day. Russ Lane, the Alabama, who's one of the odds-on favorites coming in, still languishing there in the final spot. Our Toyota rules of the game, so you can follow the competition along with us. This is the final of three days of competition. 25 competitors out there, cut down for 50 competitors. Five fish limit on each day. You must fish within the boundaries of Lay Lake, and the highest three-day total is going to win the big prize today, championship day. Lay Lake in Birmingham, Alabama. That's our playing field for this one right here. Take a look at it on the Coosa River, famous for bass fishing. Between Talladega, Alabama and Birmingham, Lay Lake, about 48 miles long, 12,000 acres. And there's going to be two key areas of this lake we're going to focus on today. The Mid-Lake area, areas like where Kevin Van Dam's fishing right here. We're really going to look at upriver. Out, out to the river, Mary Delgado is with Kevin Van Dam at the launch. Thanks, Tommy. I'm here with Kevin Van Dam. He was 18th on the leaderboard after day one. Day two, different story. He's on top of that leaderboard and the number one position. What did you do differently on day two? Well, I, I got a little bit of help with the weather change, and, you know, these fish are ready to come up and they're getting ready to thinking about spraying and I, you know the conditions were just a lot better yesterday and those fish were eating where the first day they were just kind of slapping at my bait or not hitting at all so i'm looking at the clouds and liking my chances for today well hopefully you'll have this cloud coverage all day long right yeah a little bit of wind too so uh you know hopefully not too much but uh you know you just go out on this day you know all you want to do is be in contention going the last day and i've put myself in that position so i'm gonna try to make the most of it all right good luck to you thanks Mary Delgado with Kevin Van Dam looking confident, which you probably should if you're KVD on this special day. Also out at the lake, Byron Velvick here to talk about weather and strategies. Byron? 
Thanks a lot, Tommy. A lot happening on this day three Bassmaster Classic. The sun has popped out. You can see it in my eyes. Ken Van Dam says, I hope that sun goes away. He wants it overcast. If it's overcast, he said this is his tournament to win. The weather will be just right. Now, Terry Scroggins, Boy Duckett, a lot of the guys that are flipping grass, flipping mats, they're saying, give us that sun. Let those fish come up under the mats and position themselves. That's what they're hoping for. They have targets if the sun is out. Now, Skeet Reese, Randy Howell, Tommy Biffle, they're up in the current. They want two things. Give us a little bit of sun. Give us the current. They're after the spotted bass. Lots of mixed bags here. Lots of strategies going on. Day three is going to be crazy out here at the Bassmaster Classic. We're going to go out to Kevin Van Dam right now in the Mid Lake area. One of the things, his, his game plan coming into this, he is not going to focus on spotted bass at all. It's so hard to get yourself in position in these things anymore. It's in any tournament. And then in the Classic, you know, gosh, day one was so frustrating to me. I really, you know, knew I was on the right fish, and it just, I just it couldn't get those quality bites. And uh, so yesterday I had a little bit of uh, payback on my mind, and, it, you know, it worked out pretty good. So all you can ask is to have a shot going in the final day. And to go in with the lead, it doesn't get any better than that. What was he talking about there, Kevin Van Dam? Well, he said he wants to put himself in position to win this thing, and I said he's not focusing on spotted bass, meaning he's going after the heavier large, large mouth. I, I, I talked to him a lot in practice, and he said this tournament will be won with large mouth bass, not the more plentiful spotted bass. He goes, I'm fishing this to win it. He goes, if I was fishing for fifth, tenth place, I would look at the spots, but I am here to win it, and large mouth is what's on his mind. Kevin Van Dam, widely regarded as right now, at this point in time, the number one man in the sport of bass fishing for a number of different reasons. Definitely. And, and right here's vintage Kevin Van Dam. He's starting out, he's running and gunning, he's covering a lot of water, and he's fishing lures that he can fish fast. This one's 12 inches or longer. It will be the first keeper of the day for KVD. Not the time you win, is it? Feels good to get a bite. All right, we're talking about Boyd Duckett, our leader on day number one. Boyd Duckett trying to bring this prize home for Alabama. No one has ever won the Classic in their home state. Take a look at his spot right there where he caught his fish on day number two. Way up above Boyd Duckett at this point right now. What does that place tell you right there? Well, he's fishing some grass right now. Man, that sun comes out today. Yeah. We're gonna go flip up some monsters in the mat today. It didn't rain enough to really muddy it up, you know, so to speak. Water will be up today, too. They don't usually, very seldom, draw current. Oh, God, I just missed one. Oh, there's short strike. Golly. There's two strikes I missed. Come on, sweetie, hit it again. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, no, it pulled off. Oh, my God. God, they're hitting it with a closed mouth. We hit it hard, too. Oh, man, that's four bites I've had here this morning. God, please stay on for a change. Cotton's not hooked good, either. They're just not hitting, so they're not hooked. Very good. My fish is barely hooked. One little itty-bitty hook left in him, and those spots just don't give up. They don't ever get tired, do they? He's got a pretty good... Good two and a half now. That first strike I had went boom. <laughs> well, I'm probably leading this thing again. Kevin's probably still running. All right, Boyd Duckett, the Alabama boy, looking for all the world like he intends to stay with the pack. He's going to contend for the win in this classic 2007. Now, Terry McWilliams, our Federation Nation angler, an amateur fisherman here in the classic fishing, a special place, a steam plant, the Wilsonville Steam Plant, with a very special feature, an outflow water pipe. Yesterday I had a limit by 8.30, then they just quit. So, so I'm trying to get, get up here quick and get them while the getting's good. And here's the biggest key to Terry's area. It's all about current. We've talked about this all week long. Current makes fish bite. And on this body of water, it makes spotted bass bite. The best thing about Terry's spot, it replenishes every morning. He catches a limit here, he can leave, then he can come back and start culling. One of the keys to winning a tournament is having a spot that constantly reloads.
ready. He's got one on. He's and, doing some moving and, around and, in that current. And check this out. Th that's how much oh. current is right here. Literally, you're moving about 10 miles an hour and just trying to keep up with the boat you're standing in. And more than anything, that, that's when it gets a little hairy when you're fighting a Coosa River spot. Terry McWilliams, the former state trooper. He's used to moving and violations. Now. He's going to have all his vehicular strategies in hand for this one here. Thank you, Lord. I thought at first it was another striper. Good keeper in the boat for McWilliams. Important to get a start like that. Definitely. And we're going to run over to Dean Rojas right now. Already struck pay dirt with oh a God. giant spotted bass yeah, to start good. the morning with. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that belly. Isn't that something else? Nice beautiful. That's the way to start the morning. Nice four pounder in the well. He's a little ways down that leaderboard, but Dean Rojas is making some big ground up early on on this championship day, this final day of fishing. On Lay Lake, Birmingham, Alabama, Boyd Duckett, the man who has taken over the lead from Kevin Van Dam, and Dean Rojas jumping all the way up to the first page right there with that very nice, very nice spotted bass. We're going to go through this full field of 25, take a look at the two Alabama anglers who've been contending so hard in this thing, Steve Kennedy and Timmy Horton. Well, and there's, there's really two anglers. You mentioned one of them, Steve Kennedy and Gary Klein, they had really greatly improved their weight after day one. They're the ones you need to keep your eye on for the rest of the day. Oh, we got so much more to come in this show, so much more over the next two hours. Look out. Yeah! I'm on him now. Still ahead, Michael Iaconelli, still in the hunt for his second Bassmaster Classic title. But will he go Ike before this day is over? We'll find out. I yell a lot and I scream a lot and, you know, is it real, is it an act or whatever. You know, it, that's me. That's also ahead, our own Kenny Main learned some things about pro bass fishing in his first trip to the Bassmaster Classic, including the basics of the language of pro bass fishing. How come um, we have to call you anglers, not fisher guys who wake up early and fish? Also ahead, local pro Gerald Swindle defends his actions that got him disqualified from the Classic. Was he driving his boat in a dangerous way? The environment that, that, that I play the game in and the speed is extremely fast. To me, it was just another day at the office. To everybody else, it was dangerous. And Ish Monroe has reached the top of his profession, but he's had to face some challenges along the way that his fellow Classic anglers have not had to identify with. We have the DWBs, we call it driving while black, where you get pulled over for what they called them routine checks. They wanted to see if you either stole the boat or stole the truck or something like that. Now they pull me over to get my autograph. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the Bassmaster Classic is brought to you by Pure Oil Later, Pure Oil Now, Pure Oil Later, Mercury Marine, Mercury number one on the water, Advance Auto Parts, providing car care know-how to protect your investment. We're ready in advance. And by the all-new Toyota Tundra, the truck that's changing it all. The story of the 2001 Classic was supposed to be the looming hurricane around the Louisiana Gulf, but it turned out to be Michigan's Kevin Van Dam. It took him 11 tries, but Van Dam finally celebrated the World Championship of Professional Angling. Without a doubt, winning the Classic is the ultimate. You know, that moment was definitely something that I can remember like it was yesterday, and I'm sure it'll be the same. 30 years from now, I'll remember that moment. 10-13. It was 11 years of trying, probably seemed like an eternity to someone as driven as Kevin Van Dam, and it sort of opened the floodgates. 2005, he picks up his second classic title on the Three Rivers, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Ten wins so far for Kevin Van Dam. He would much like his 11th win to be his third classic. He would be only the second man to win three classics. Let's take you out, put you in the boat now with one Dean Rojas. We leave Paradise Point Marina. We're going to head down Lake, not too very far, to a place called Spring Creek, which is basically just a huge bay. Bay. Got a creek or two running into it, actually. Dean Rojas been spending a lot of time near this Highway 71 bridge. Right now, we're going to pick him up just outside the bridge on the inside part of the lake, fishing some grass. There's one. Oh, yeah, big one, big one. Monster, monster, monster. 
Oh, please. Oh, oh man. Big fish, eight pound line. Please hold them. Please hold them. Oh no. Please stay on there. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here, honey. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Yes. Yeah. Look at that. Yes, another four pounder. Oh, yeah. Yes. We'll put him in there with that big spot. How about that? Nice. Yeah. Give me some. Give me some. Give me some. Yeah. A big spotted bass and a big large mouth. Now for Dean Rojas. This guy making a major move in the early hours championship day in the Bassmaster Classic. Kevin Van Dam, is he looking for large mouth right now? What kind of places are these guys searching out? The 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 Mid Lake area of Lay Lake is the largemouth center of the whole body of water. The reason why it's got a lot of backwater flats and dark water bays. What I mean by this, it has areas that are warming up faster than anywhere else in the lake, and that's where the largemouth are gonna go. Little bit, you guys. There's a good one right there. See, he's fat and just came up there. He's got to find his big, big buddies. Not so much size there, but the fourth fish of the day for Kevin Van Dam. So he's on him, he's catching him. At least got the feeling going right now. Now over to Terry McWilliams, our amateur angler competing for the title of world champion bass fisherman at that steam generating plant, the Wilsonville steam plant with that outflow, with that outflow pipe that you see right there. And if you keep your eye, more than anything, this looks totally different from the largemouth area. Perfect spotted bass water. I'm only fishing for half a million dollars, but you know. You figure up 38 years in the United States, please. That's probably more than I made in 38 years. But it was good to me. It helped me raise my family. And here's the difference in the spotted bass water. There's a ton of rock, there's a ton of wood, but the main key is that current. If you watch right here, Terry McWilliams is throwing his jig up current and he's just keeping a tight line on it. He's letting the natural current flow pull his bait downstream. These fish position behind stumps, rock, anything they can get behind and then they'll ambush the jig as it naturally flows to them. Terry McWilliams again last month finished top in his region. Federation Nation Championship. That's how he earned this ticket to the Bassmaster Classic. He was so excited, very emotional on stage. A day he's been dreaming about for so many years. And, and Terry is a master of fishing this way. He grew up fishing the Ohio River. Granted, the difference in the Ohio River from Lay Lake, the Ohio River has like four bass in the entire <laughs> system. Thank you, Lord. The green is. More work. Nice one there. Keeps Terry McWilliams right in the thick of things right there. Look at him in third place. Boy Duckett, the Alabama man, trying to bring it home for Alabama in first place. Kevin Van Dam started this championship day in the lead. He's staying right up there. He's catching him. He needs to upgrade his size. You know, the key thing you got to keep your eye on, though, Kevin Van Dam jumped up from 19th place after day one. There's a lot of guys between 11th and 20th place that are still in it. Guys down, last five spots there are going to have to make miracles happen on this final day. They're glad to be here fishing. I got a lot of wishful thinking, okay, Tommy? All right, That's okay. what I got right I know now. you're sending out some good vibes to all those guys right there. A lot of movement up and down that leaderboard. Some huge movement in day two of this classic, sort of like a seismic feel here, a little bit of an earthquake. Something totally unexpected happened. One of the big favorites, one of the Alabama anglers coming into this classic, flamboyant guy, Gerald Swindle, 
was disqualified. Disqualified on the basis of some boat operation. We saw this right here, flying right past Randy Howell. There's all the viewers there, the camera boat as well. That did not look good on tape, and uh, well, the folks, the authorities, when they saw that, didn't like it as well. They disqualified Gerald Swindle from the basket. And, and, and at this time right here, Gerald Swindle had no idea he was disqualified. He went about his day trying to win the Bassmaster Classic. Again, I didn't talk to you one time. He said it the last 30 minutes. Yeah, I'm not sure it caught him totally by surprise. Uh, I told him he had been uh, disqualified for violations of rules 5I, 6I, and he said, I understand. It's your call. I respect your decision. Uh, he said, I thought I was doing the right thing, going the way he did. And I said, Gerald, you should have idled through all those boats. I got disqualified. I got disqualified for running by you. Yes, I just got disqualified. I didn't think anything of it, not a big deal at all to me, and because we're used to driving boats and we, we know what we're doing, we're not being dangerous. And I just caught a four and a half pounder on the last cast to give me a big sack. Said it's unsportsmanlike conduct. They've watched the media said it was dangerous driving. And I said, Randy motioned me on, but Tripp's like, if I waved you a red light, would you go? But that's what we do. We fish little creeks like that, and you wave each other on so you don't have to slow down and idle. I just want everybody here to know I didn't cheat. I didn't try to cheat. I wasn't trying to gain an edge. I made a simple judgment error. Big letdown for Gerald Swindle and a lot of his fans as well. Mark Zona, you have fished a ton of tournaments. What do you think about the whole thing? <laughs> oh, here we go. You know, I, I'm not going to sit here and look like an idiot. You can look at the footage. He was close to other boats, okay? It was probably not 100% the safest move you're ever going to find. With that being said, I'm sure Gerald Swindle is ready to move on. Yeah. Lord knows I'm ready to move on, as I'm sure you are. All right, and we are going to move on. In fact, there is so much yet to come on our classic coverage. We're just getting started with this championship day right here. Ish Monroe, an African-American from the West Coast competing in a predominantly white Southern sport. Does Ish feel oh. there's a color barrier wow. in pro bass fishing? My philosophy is it doesn't matter if you're black or white because the fish can't can't tell. The only color that counts is the, the green money and the green bass. A visit to the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute is a journey back in time. It chronicles the roles Birmingham played in the civil rights movement. Its mission to promote civil and human rights worldwide through education. This is our coverage of the Bassmaster Classic 2007 Final Day. Championship day, the fishing well underway right now, and Boyd Duckett, the man atop our leaderboard. All these weights are unofficial, but Boyd Duckett from Demopolis, Alabama, trying to be the first angler ever to bring home the classic title in a home state. And, and besides Kevin Van Dam right now, there's two other people that I really want you to watch today. One, Steve Kennedy, and the other one is Gary Klein. The reason why, they actually excelled on day two over their day one weights. Those two guys should be watched. Back out on the lake now, plenty of fishing going on. We take you from Paradise Point Marina, the starting point, all three days of this Bassmaster Classic. We're going up the Coosa River, up Lay Lake, to a special place where Skeet Reese and Randy Howell have spent most of their tournament. And a very special place. If you look at the area they're fishing, it is the exact same stretch that the Classic was won in 2002 by Jay Yellis. about in every tournament we cover, Tommy, to win one of these events, you have to fish clean, you have to fish perfect. Right now, Skeet Reese is not doing that. <clears throat> oh, yeah. oh, there you go. Oh, yeah. oh, Lord. Oh, goodness. Hey, out of there. Daggone tree lean. Mm, hurt my hand, I hit my dick, so. Oh, man. man. All right, for Brandy How There it is, the Logan Martin Dam once again. Both these guys fishing near what you'd call the tail race, where that water is generated and comes through plenty of current right there. And now over to Gary Klein. He's been close in his share of classic, a former angler of the year, second place in 2003 to Michael Iconelli. Gary Klein's got all the skills necessary. He would love this on his resume. He does. And I mean, I, this guy is a one-trick pony. He is flipping a jig, and that's all he's been doing all tournament. 
The thing I pounded this weekend is guys fishing their strengths. The reason they do that, they're comfortable fishing this way. They feel at any given time during the day, they can blow a 20 pound stringer out. Gary Klein is one of those guys right now. I want you to keep your eye on him. The biggest reason for his style fishing, he's excelling through the tournament. His weights are not decreasing, they're increasing as the tournament goes on. You saw a scale right there, that bass weighing about a pound and three quarters. Gets over the 12 inch length limit, so that's a keeper. Boyd Duckett, our leader in the tournament right now. Boyd Duckett, well, he's a businessman from Demopolis, Alabama, who's been in and out of the bass fishing game. He's in it in a big way this special week. I'm a little disappointed that my spots are so freaky, you know? It was, there wasn't boat traffic or anything like that that messed them up. You know, they were just really, really shy this morning. You know, that first one, I barely had it hooked. First one. That's a good fish, too. That's what you want right there. Show me your face, girl. This fish is barely hooked, too. God, why can't I get them where I can swing them? Oh, see that one little itty bitty hook. See that one little tiny hook? I pulled that one in. One little tiny hook's all that was in the corner. They're just short striking this morning. You see that? What's this? I mean, that one little itty bitty hook right there. <laughs> that would have been an easy one to lose. Boy, duck it there. Lots of fish catching going on in this final day. This lake has been great throughout all three days of this classic so far. We got plenty more fish catches, plenty more movement up and down that leaderboard yet to come. But right now, I want you to meet someone very, very special. There is no color berry, of course, in the sport of pro bass fishing. It is a predominantly white sport, and it does have its roots in the south. And Ish Monroe is a city boy. He comes from the Bay Area in San Francisco, learned to appreciate bass fishing at a very, very early age. Now he has had a share of struggles in the sport of bass fishing, and he's faced his share of discrimination through his life along the way. But today, if you talk to Ish Monroe, you get the very definite impression that he considers himself to be colorblind. Who am I? Ish Monroe, two-time Bassmaster Elite Series champion on the West Coast. San Francisco! It's all about the bay. I get asked all the time what it's like to be a black pro angler. Race isn't an issue. The only color I care about is the green. My philosophy is it doesn't matter if you're black or white because the fish can't tell. The only color that counts is the, the green money and the green bass. I'm hoping that, you know, I'm more so a role model for our kids of all nationalities, whether they be white, black, Asian, Latino, but they can relate to me and they say, well, hey, man, he fishes, he's cool. I, I, I want to do that for a living. How does a city kid grow up to be a bass fisherman? Hard work and determination. And I remember back in the day of doing the government cheese and food stamps. I slept in my truck. I did the peanut butter jelly sandwiches. I, you know, I did, you know, I'd go out and hit Taco Bell for the, the 99 cent tacos, you know, and all that stuff. When I actually finally made it and going back there, you know, we, we have the DWBs. We call it driving while black, where, you know, you're still in the southern states and you get pulled over for what I call routine checks or what they called routine checks. And they were just, you know, they wanted to see if you you either stole the boat or stole the truck or something like that, but it, it's different now, you know. It's now it's they pull me over to get my autograph and, and to talk to me about fishing. My biggest influence, my dad. Without his support, I wouldn't be where I am today. It's that huge backing support that everybody needs to have while doing this because it's a hard, lonely road, as a lot of people don't seem to see. You know, bass fishing is great and everything, but when you go spend 250 days a year on the road, you're just, man, you need that backing support. You know, you can always count on your dad to, to be there. I don't fish tournaments to finish second. Ish Monroe, 2007 Bassmaster Classic Champ. I kind of like that. Ish Monroe in the prime of his career, having a great classic here. He's fishing on this final day. And you bet this guy is an inspiration to kids, city kids who are interested in fishing. Definitely. I mean, you get the, you got to love Ish Monroe. You know, he's embraced that he is a role model for urban kids of all races, okay? And the, and the great thing about Ish Monroe, he doesn't hide from it, man. A lot of professional athletes, I don't want any part of that. Ish Monroe promotes fishing. He's great for it. Boy, he's doing terrific in the world of bass fishing as well. We got plenty more to come, lots of movement up and down that leaderboard. When we come back, Sports Center's Kenny Main spends most of his time covering tackle football, but this week's assignment, something new. He learns things about pro bass fishing. Chilean sea bass! Bass! That was the echo. I was adding here the echo.
The Big Easy played host to the 2003 Classic, but it was this boisterous kid from New Jersey who stole the show. Classic number two, here I come! Oh my God, it's the winner. During the final minutes of the final day, Mike Iaconelli caught a huge three and a half pound bass. Mike's a freak, straight up freak. That's my personality. You know, I'm a I'm a very uh, exuberant, excited type of person, and in everything I do. Iconelli's classic victory propelled his popularity and gave pro fishing a new poster boy. Coverage continues here at the 2007 Bassmaster Classic Lay Lake, Birmingham, Alabama. Kevin Van Dam started this final day with the lead. He's back on top right now. A little less than a pound over Terry McWilliams, the amateur angler competing here for the top prize in the world of fishing. Boyd Duckett, the Alabama man. And Dean Rojas from down in Texas has made a huge move up the leaderboard. Lots of moves up and down. We've got our own Byron Velvick out on the water. And Byron Velvick decided probably not a very good idea to get very far away from Kevin Van Dam. So here he is with his report. Day three, Bassmaster Classic action. Behind me, Kevin Van Dam. It's only 10 o'clock in the morning. He's already got a real good limit, about 13, 14 pounds. He doesn't mind the sun so much because there's a pretty good breeze on the water. He's still throwing reaction baits, covering those grass lines. We're only about a mile north of where these guys went out of in Beeswax Creek. It's a great area to probably catch a lot of fish, and right now he is showing that by catching fish all around this area. It's almost like it's his own little 10-hole course. He bounces around back and forth, catching fish almost everywhere he seems to stop. Kevin Van Dam off to a great start on day three of this classic. Byron was talking about reaction baits right yes. there. Explain to us what reaction baits are. Well, I'm going to break it down and make it kind of, well, stupid simple right Good. here. It's, it's exactly as it sounds. Number one, you can cover a lot of water with a reaction bait, but these fish are kind of programmed like humans. If if a bee flies in your face, Tommy, the first thing you do is swat at it. Get it out of my face. It's the same thing a bass does. When this comes flying by him, he is programmed to annihilate it. It's more like it. See, they're going to bite. If you're going to throw a bait like this, you've got to have those kind of hooks. I've got number two triple grip trebles on there, and that's key right there. Desired reaction received by Kevin Van Dam. Another keeper goes in the box right there. And the great thing going on in this tournament right now, there's two things playing. The Mid Lake area where Kevin Van Dam's at catching all of his largemouth, and the far upper reaches of the lake where Skeet Reese and Randy Howell are catching all spotted bass. Spotted bass fish in it smells good. <clears throat> so Zona, what are you smelling right now? What's happening? What did you say to me, Tommy? Now, come on, Santa. give it up. Hey, all, all seriousness, this is a spitting image of day one and day two. A lot of bass being caught right now, but not a lot of big bass. The big bass have all come later in the day. That's two. It's just a cute little one. But we're starting. Skeet Reese, another good keeper. Things are starting to tighten up here. All right, we got a whole lot more on the way right now. Kenny Maine, one of the greatest minds in sports. I love his take on everything having to do with any kind of game. I love his takes on life. But this week, quite a milestone for Kenny Maine. His maiden voyage at the Bassmaster Classic. So many questions. Here's the main event. Bet you going fishing all of the time. Baby going fishing too. Bet you it's 5 a.m. with down stale bagels and bad Bet coffee. The bass masters are on their red carpet. How come um, we have to call you anglers and not fisher guys who wake up early and fish? Angler sounds better. It's classier. Yes, right. I'd like you to refer to me as uh, Sultan of Arabia. What kind of fish are you looking for today? I'm looking for a six foot blonde, 100, 110 pounds. <laughs> 
bonded with the anglers and their angler families and learned bass fishing is an international sport. Hometown. <laughs> you live, your hometown is the Sheraton Hotel. Do you know what the international language is that bridges all cultures? Is peekaboo. And in Japanese, nainaiba, correct? See? Nainaiba. Nainaiba. You didn't even know I was here, did you? They bade me farewell and encouraged me to seek largemouth bass. That seemed to be the point of all this. I notice you're the only one fishing this area. Does that say you're smarter or dumber than the rest? <laughs> Big fish like a jig, and this term will probably be one on a jig, if I had to guess. When you were casting it, it sort of looked like uh, marijuana. Not that I would know, but I mean, it looked like, it just looked like weed. You've been described as the Tiger Woods of fishing. Tiger! Wouldn't the highest compliment be if they called Tiger Woods the Kevin Van Dam of golf? That'd be pretty awesome. It's actually been in the paper before like that, but uh, I never got a response from Tiger out of it. What if you tried to revolutionize the sport and brought a gun out here and hunted at the same time? You got one. What is it? there will not win you the class. But even at three and four pound, you're still, that was very sporting of you to give him another chance at life, by the way. That's how we roll. That's your thing. You pointed a little late. <clears throat> pointed a little bit quicker. You got to be mocked by all outdoorsmen right now. I learned today that my father and grandfather lied to me about noise on the boat. You could actually be as loud as you want up here. Hello! Please don't. <laughs> don't do that? Well, we've tricked that guy over there. They're jumping! Can we yell one more time? Go for it. I love fish! Chilean sea bass! Bass! That was the echo. Was that? All right, good stuff. I think this guy's hooked. I think we won't have a classic without him anymore. I was into right. that Kevin Van Dam bringing a gun out and revolutionizing the sport is what I was into. <laughs> Kind of an interesting proposition. Kevin Van Dam trying to revolutionize his record by winning three classics here. Right He's the man on top on this final day. Boyd Duckett of Alabama hanging right there with him. Guy you've got to keep your eye on right now, our Federation Nation hangler, Terry McWilliams, sitting in third place. Gary Klein hanging out just under the top ten right there. He's always lingering under the leaders. There's the guys who are going to have to make something big happen. So much on the way, so much more fishing yet to come. It's just 10 o'clock in the morning. We go all the way to 3 in the afternoon with this fishing, so stick around. Some good stuff on the way. Pro Bass Fishing has a three sports star in Kevin Worth, former Kentucky Derby jockey, future pro golfer, but bass fishing is still number one. If I can go out here and shoot a good round of golf and never get the shakes, and I catch me a five pounder, I don't care if I'm fishing for money or not, I get the shakes. Master Classic 2007. This is it, the big day, championship day. We finish at the weigh-in. Coming up a little bit later, one of these anglers is going to be a half million dollars heavier. Kevin Van Dam, number one man in the sport of bass fishing. Many say he started the day with the lead, lost it. He's back on top now, less than a two-pound lead over Boyd Duckett of Demopolis, Alabama. Amazing story about Boyd. Boyd has never attended a Bassmaster Classic. Never qualified for one, never sat in the audience, get to know what it's like. He said he wanted his first trip to be special, special in a way where he could win it on his first trip. Mission accomplished on that one right now. Now the next dream to tackle, win the Classic, Boyd Duckett. I mean, they might be biting all over the lake and they might not be, but I tell you, this creek is just active this morning. There's no reason why there couldn't be one right out here. There's one. Yeah, baby. That's a good one, too. That's a good one. God, it's a big old spot. God, it's a big old spot. They're so mean. These fish are so mean. I want to see some bass that look like you. You just stay on there for me, sweetie. Oh, yeah. You have a three pounder. Some weight this morning. Oh, one more of those, and we can go flip us up about 20 pounds today. 
On down the lake to Gary Klein, and, and this is one of the times during a tournament, I mean, there's a couple hours left in the Bassmaster Classic, you start talking to yourself. You literally do. There's, there's, if you've ever fished any bass tournament, a club tournament, a regional tournament, you know there's tons of voices in your head, and you got to give your nod right now to the veterans, guys like Gary Klein, guys like Skeet Reese, more than anything, guys like Kevin Van Dam, people that have been there, they know what it's like to compete the final day of the Bassmaster Classic. Know the right voices to put out and know the right voices to listen to. Gary Klein looks like he's got a quality keeper right there. That's going to make him pretty happy. Gary Klein started out as a kid. The Bass Masters, just out of high school kid from California, Lake Oroville area, has moved to Texas. Weatherford, Texas is where he resides now. He's been one of the big names. He's been one of the major, major forces in the sport of bass fishing for the past 20 years. Definitely. When Gary took second place at the Louisiana Delta Classic, it crushed him. He thought he had it wrapped up, but this one right here, he still has a shot. Hey, we'll be back out to the fishing in just a moment. Right now, I want you to meet another angler with a fantastic story. When he was a youngster, Kevin Worth was a national roller skating champion. Later, he went on to be a jockey in the Kentucky Derby. He also has aspirations of being a golfer on the PGA Senior Tour. But for right now, the sport is fishing. The world of sports has always been wide open for Kevin Worth. Hi, I'm Kevin Worth, Champions Tour hopeful. Let's see how I can play. I could shoot in the 70s when I was 12 years old, you know. I played golf with this gentleman one day, and he says, you ever thought about trying to make a senior tour? And I said, oh, I thought about it. I said, but I, you know, it's too late, you know, I can't do it. And he said, no, he said, you can make it. When I come play the game of golf, it actually lets me keep my focus really sharp and my mind really sharp because I'm doing all the same processes but in a different scenario. So actually my fishing stays real sharp that way on my downtime. Hi, I'm Kevin Worth, professional angler. I'll tell you what, I can go out and shoot a good round of golf and shoot low and, and never get the shakes. When I catch me a five pounder, I don't care if I'm fishing for money or not, I get the shakes. It's fun. I had a friend that owned a tackle shop, and he gave me a call one day and asked me if I wanted to fish a tournament. And I, knew, you know, I, I had two little bill rods and one little bill rod, raggedy tackle box, and I said, yeah, I'll go fish a tournament. And then that's when I remembered back when I subscribed, when I was a kid to the Bassmaster magazine and remembered guys doing this for a living. I said, that's what I'm going to do for a living right there. Hi, I'm Kevin Worth, 1981 Kentucky Derby jockey. The best part about being in a Kentucky Derby is being in a Kentucky Derby. And that year they actually used the auxiliary gate on the outside, which is what I was in. And the first 100, 200 yards of the race, I had to really jack him. I mean, really send him away from there. What that really did, it made my horse really react and get pretty revved. And when he got that revved, I mean, I really had to reach up and grab him, and, and you know, anytime you're sitting there, you know, just cranking on one, their mouth's that wide open, you know, you're pretty much done. Hi, I'm Kevin Worth, 2007 Bassmaster Classic Champion. My man, Kevin Worth, oh, yeah. you, and I, you and I both big Kevin Worth fans, and you spend a lot of time with him. What do you I think do. of this guy? Well, you know, Kevin's a little bit disappointed right now. He actually wanted to be at the NFL Combine for the last <laughs> few weeks. After that, he's headed out to Sarasota for Major League Baseball spring training. All right, well, you impressive. can't take your eyes off Kevin Worth. It, no matter what the sport is, this man is going to be a contender. we got a lot of contenders for the top prize in pro bass fishing. So much action yet left to come. This man right here, we know the adults. We know all the antics of Michael Iaconelli. But how about Ike? The early years, that's when we come back. You have your mom driving you to the lake and you, you know, you pull over at the side, you kind of you kind of look each way to make sure that there's no neighborhood girls in the area, you know, and you quick go in the trunk, grab your rod, and quick sneak down there and get to the pond before anybody can see it. The Bassmaster Classic 2007. This is championship day. When we are done, when the weigh-in is all wrapped up, one angler will stand atop the heap in the fishing world. Could it be Kevin Van Dam with his third classic? He's the man on top right now with plenty of fishing left to go. There's the boys who are trying to catch him, run him down right now, including Gary Klein, who's missed out on it a few times. He'd like to add the classic. And there's the guys who've got a long, super long way to go right there. That's our 25 who are out there fishing. We'll take you out and let you meet Terry McWilliams. What a fascinating story. The Bassmaster Classic, like the U.S. Open in golf, allows the amateurs to compete if they will submit to some very rigorous 
risk qualifying. He has been through the mill. He has done what it takes to get here, and he has taken the most advantage of it. Definitely. You know, uh, Terry McWilliams is an Indiana Bass Federation Nation angler, and you have got to throw props to this guy. The reason being, everybody said, wow, Terry had a vigorous year last year. This guy has been fishing the Federation for 17 years. This day right here that we're watching is 17 years in the making, and I'm not going to sugarcoat this time. This guy has a legitimate shot at beating all the Goliaths of professional bass fishing. Terry McWilliams fishing a very special spot here, the Wilsonville Steam Generator. That's a power generating plant, northern part up the Coosa River on this Lay Lake area. Of course, the water that outflows from there, the water that's used to cool those generators, so that water's got a little bit of heat to it, a little bit of warmer temperatures as it comes out of that pipe. Definitely, but the whole key to Terry McWilliams' spot is that current. If we sit here and talk about it, you cannot pound it enough. That current is bringing new fish to his area. He can catch two, three, four, it'll die down, then two or three fish seem to move in. Last time an angler from the Bass Federation Nation won the Classic 1994. Brian Kirchel won that Classic, tragically lost his life in an airplane accident not long after that. This would actually really just reinvigorate the grassroots of bass fishing, tournament fishing anyway. We were the anglers who compete in the Bass Federation tournaments all across the world each and every week. Don't whip, but I got him. Thank you, Lord. Son. Number five. How about that for a fifth fish for Terry McWilliams? Over to Kevin Van Dam. Still got that moving bait working out. There. Definitely. Kevin is fishing all reaction baits, and the biggest reason why is that wind. If you look at that wind, Kevin Van Dam is a happy man. That's a good one there. Now the wind is so critical for Kevin Van Dam. Throwing these reaction baits, what it does more than anything, it breaks up the surface of the water where the fish cannot get a good look at the bait. That's when they'll react to it. Kevin Van Dam trying to get to where he's going, looking for that third classic title right now. Let's talk about the man who won the classic back in 2003. Michael Iaconelli was here at this classic week to accept his award for Angler of the Year in 2006, and he made a very moving speech there. He said to some people, I'm your best friend. To other people, I'm your worst enemy. It seems like everyone has an opinion about Ike the man. But what about Ike the early years? As a boy, his start in fishing. Take a look. I'm in a, in a rare position where I've got to turn a childhood hobby into a career, and that's, that's amazing. My mom, my uncle, my grandparents taught me how to fish. We took two or three family vacations a year to the Pocono Mountains and to the Jersey Shore, but the trips to the Poconos were really, really what I remember the most. In the beginning, it was just, just fishing. If I had an opportunity to be outside and have a rod in my hand, I was having fun. My grandfather had a tackle box, and it was kind of it was kind of his sacred box, you know, that had his lures and had his his trout hooks and all this stuff in it. And it was kind of one of those unwritten deals where you just didn't go in, in, in Pop's box. But one morning, I just had the urge to go in there and just kind of snoop around. And I went in there and I found a I found a lure, and I went down to the end of the dock, and I put this thing on my rod. I can vividly remember throwing that thing out there, and as it hit the water. You know, I kind of just looked at that bait and kind of watched the ripples come off of the lure. Had no idea, you know, what to do with this plug. You know, do you, do you let it sit there? Do you reel? I don't know. If you've ever seen a topwater strike from a largemouth bass, it's so, it's so explosive and so visual. And he comes up and just, and just crushes this lure, like in slow motion. And now I've got this fish on and he's jumping and he's fighting, fighting harder than anything I've ever caught in my life. And I reel it in, and I get it up to the tip of the rod, and it's just dangling there, and I'm just amazed at what just happened. I was so excited, I ran all the way back to the cabin with this fish dangling off the end of the rod and just and showed everybody, and, and that was it. A lot of times you can look back on your life and say, that was a moment which, which changed my life. That did, and that's when I got hooked on bass fishing. But one of the unique things about what I do is that I get to be a kid. 
when I'm out there fishing, I'm, I'm 13 years old again, you know, every day. That's, that's pretty awesome. Take a look at Michael Iaconelli's career in the Bassmaster Classic. It's kind of a rough and rocky road with some ups and downs, a lot of curves and swerves. Won it in 2003, disqualified in 2004, back in the top five in 05, and 2006 disqualified on day number one. A lot of people have a lot of different impressions, as we say, of Ike. Who's Ike the man to you? Ike the man to me is the one that we just looked at right there. Calm. I don't know the one that's screaming. I really don't. You know. And one of the amazing things, and this guy beat the odds. He truly did. He grew up in an inner city. He was raised by his mom and his uncle. And to somehow rise to the top of the professional bass fishing world, those odds are astronomical. All right, a fascinating story. Can't keep her eyes off Ike and Ellie. He's in the field fishing today in the top 25. All of these guys, through the season, they are out there grinding, grinding hard. But today, they take grinding up to a, a higher level by far. Really wrenching, emotional inside, working so hard. And when the payoff comes, sometimes it all comes out. It's really, really big. we got more of that on the way as we get closer to the crowning of the world champion. The Bassmaster Classic 2007. There's the host city, Birmingham, Alabama. This is championship day. We started out with 50 anglers. We're down to 25 on this final day. Of course, those 50 anglers, 37 of those anglers qualified through the Bassmaster Elite Series, the top series for competitive professional bass fishing in the United States. It's a long, long year that they compete out there trying to make it to this classic, and the competition is all out. The flavor of the Elite Series is something to behold. Oh, my gosh. Come and get you some of that! Get you some of that! Ah! Oh! Woo! Bam! Oh! With the joint. Ah! Gotcha! And Mike Iaconelli moves to the top of the food chain. In size and scope, the Elite Series really stepped it up in the year 2006, going all the way to 11 regular season events and three majors. It is huge. It, it is. And, and what makes it so huge is the qualification process. You know, you can't just wake up tomorrow morning and say, well, I'm going to go fish the Elite Series. It takes over a year to qualify to fish it. And then when you fish it, it is a grueling, grueling time making it to the Bassmaster Classic. You have to fish for over nine months to qualify for this tournament alone. The leaderboard for championship day populated, of course, by Elite Series anglers, but not exclusively. We got some other names in there as well. Kevin Van Dam, really one of the big guys on the Elite Series, still the man on top, but not by such a margin. Boyd Duckett came from the Open Series, just below the Elite Series. These guys are all scrapping as hard as they can to get something done to make something big happen on this championship day. Definitely, Tommy. And the one thing that still has to be noted, the best bite throughout the weekend definitely has been the afternoon bite. Bear in mind that all those weights that you see right there are unofficial. We'll get them official when we go to the weigh-in. The rules of the game brought to you by Toyota. Final day of competition, 25 competitors. We started with 50, as we said. We're down to 25. A five-fish limit. Every day, you have to fish within the boundaries of Lay Lake. The highest three-day total wins a half a million dollars. Our playing field, Lay Lake, southeast of Birmingham, Alabama, kind of between the Talladega Speedway and the city of Birmingham. Take a look close up at Lay Lake right there. Lays out pretty much north to south along the Coosa River here. Mary Delgado is out there, and she has located Dean Rojas. She's going to give us an update on him right now. Guys, I'm in a small cove in Shelby Shores. Dean Rojas is throwing his frog. That's what he's famous for. Now, he's in this cove because he's trying to stay out of the wind. He's already got 13 pounds in his boat, anchored by a four-pounder. So he's trying to catch some bigger fish so he can move up that leaderboard. Out now to Gary Klein. He has changed positions on Lay Lake. He's got that jig in hand. He's trying to make something big happen. We started here first thing in the morning, but maybe that big storm that we had last night kind of messed him up a little bit. That's the reason why I came back here. It's about noon, but I only have three good ones. I'd have about, you know, 10 pounds or so. And if I can get rid of those other two, I'll have a pretty decent bag. You know, if you can't win the Classic, at least you can make a good showing. And I just, I'd like to get two more good ones and then I'll abandon this and... That's 
what kind of spots we're here. So now I got three good ones and two babies I need to get rid of. I might be able to do that right here. All right, there's another three pounder. You know, I said coming into this tournament, I thought I could be competitive if I could keep a jig in my hands all day. And that's you know, really everything, you know, what I've done, either flipping it or casting it. No doubt about that. Gary Klein always feels most comfortable oh, yeah. with that jig. You know, if you're going to talk about that, but last year, every tournament we talked, it, it seemed we always talked about the jig. Peter T, Fort Worth, Texas, Denny Brower, Lake Champlain, Mike McClellan, Grand Lake. The last time the classic was on this lake, mm -hmm. it was one with a jig. Tommy, if you're going to dance with a scarecrow, you're going to throw the jig. Looks like another good one there for Gary Klein. You heard him say he's got three good sized fish. He needs two more big ones. That may make it to the live well. That may cull another fish for him right now. Skeet Reese from Auburn, California, always near the leaderboard, just about anywhere you go in these United States. It's deep undercut banks, man. I always expect to catch more off them, but I guess I don't know a whole lot about river fishing, but you'd think up here with all this current and everything that it wouldn't be as affected by adverse conditions. Still. Official again leaderboard coming up on noon and Kevin Van Dam is still the man so far hanging on to that top spot looking for his third Bassmaster Classic Terry McWilliams the amateur angler from the Federation Nation still hanging in there in second place and the third best story Boyd Duckett trying to be the first man to win a classic at home so much more left to come Kevin Van Dam, the man, we know how good he is. He's always in the minds of these anglers. Every day they tee it up out on any lake, anywhere. But how good is he really? Kevin's ability to keep his confidence without being rattled is unbelievable. I love it because I know I gotta be at my best to beat him. Bassmaster Classic 2007, this is it. The final day, it's all or nothing on this day. The championship will be decided there on Lay Lake near Birmingham, Alabama. The man on top of our leaderboard right now. Remember, all these weights are unofficial, but the man with two classics already in his pocket, Kevin Van Dam trying to bring a third one home. Terry McWilliams, our amateur angler from the Federation Nation, not far behind him, and Boyd Duckett from the state of Alabama trying to be the first classic angler to win a classic at home. The anglers whose fortunes haven't been so great on this final day, they've fallen down the leaderboard a little bit. Let's take a look at them right now, including Randy Howell of Alabama. Randy Howell started out so great. He had a perfect spot. He was just camping there, doing so well, so solid through the first two days. But look at that, a lost fish. We talk about one fish can change your outcome in the Classic. That's a fish that Randy Howell will remember for a long, long time. Randy Howell fishing way up river. Another guy fishing up river, Wagoner, Oklahoma's Tommy Biffle. Catching fish, but catching small fish. And right now, you have to start wondering, have the fish ran out upriver? Terry Scroggins, Palatka, Florida, another guy who's been super solid in days one and two. Maybe so many people weren't expecting him to do well at this classic, but he did great. But the third day, the size of his fish has just gone down. How much can you do about that? And Timmy Horton, another Alabama hopeful from the music town, Muscle Shoals, Alabama, started his day two like this. How about a twofer to get things started on a positive note? But day three has not run like that for Timmy Horton. The one thing that got Timmy here, he was catching mixed bags of fish. He was catching a bunch of spotted bass in the morning mixed with largemouth, not so much this morning. That great story we alluded to. Terry McWilliams, a Federation Nation angler, fishing near the steam generating plant there, up river on the Coosa River here on Lay Lake. And Terry McWilliams, you talk about a guy camping in a spot right there, he's laying on this place. He is. And, and, and what can you say about Lay Lake right now? We have never had a classic with anglers fishing so many different techniques. You talk about Kevin Van Dam and Boyd Duckett cranking for largemouth. Terry Scroggins flipping heavy grass for large. But this guy right here literally fishing in a waterfall right now. <laughs> you can go all the way to Mike Iaconelli's structure fishing on the bottom of the lake. That's what makes this classic right now one of the best we've ever had. 
That waterfall you alluded to right there is the outflow pipe. That's the water that cools these steam generation pipes in this plant here. Adds a little temperature to the water, maybe adds to the current even a little bit. Got one on there he's pretty serious about. Thank you, Lord. That's what I'm looking like. That'll work. Kusa River. Nice stringer of fish for Terry McWilliams. He's keeping himself right there, right behind our tournament leader, Kevin Van Dam. The one thing Kevin said he needed more than anything was overcast skies. None of that in the future. That, that, that made me sound. Did it? He's barely hooked. Oh, better hook now. I got two in him. Oh, barely. That'll work. Get rid of that little one. Kevin Van Dam still not able to put much room between him and the second place man right there. He's got to get some bigger fish going. But let's take a look at our all-time money leaders. And there he is, Kevin Van Dam, just a shade ahead of Denny Brower. Now, if Van Dam can bring home this classic title, get himself a half a million dollars, he is going to be right. He's going to have a great, great margin between himself and the rest of the pack. All right, let's take a look at Kevin Van Dam. His career, that's his money right there. His skills, what do his fellow anglers think about Kevin Van Dam? Let's give a listen. The world's best angler, that's easy to miss. That's Kevin Van Dam. There's a few guys out there on tour that I don't want looking over my shoulder coming up to weigh in after me, and, and Kevin's the number one on that list. And there's a lot of guys that can compete in certain areas, but Kevin can do it anywhere. You know, I think in his previous life, he was a bass. That's what I think. Most any athlete out there, whether you're tennis, baseball, NASCAR, whatever you do, you can be rattled at one time. Very seldom do you see Kevin Van Dam rattle. He learns from his mistakes and uh, is able to come back, and that's what makes him so great. Once in a while, a special athlete comes along in every sport, it's like Tiger Woods and a lot of the athletes in other sports. They make decisions better and quicker, and they, they just stay at the top of the game, and I think Van Dam is that person in our sport. They respect the guys, as should everyone. A lot of reasons why he's so good. What, in your mind, is the number one? You know, Kevin just takes care of what's in front of him. You know, if you, if you talk about guys that excel in their own sports, you know, Tom Brady, man, you get in the playoffs, that guy does awesome. You do not want to go up against Kevin Van Dam is the exact same way. He's a big game player, and he craves days like today. All right, he's the big man in charge right now. This Bassmaster Classic 2007, another look at our leaderboard. Remember, all of these scores are unofficial right now. We got the weigh-in coming up a little bit later. That's when we make them all official. Kevin Van Dam with the margin. And look at this move. Gary Klein finished second in the Classic in 2003, moving up into the second position right there. Terry McWilliams, Skeet Reese, and Boyd Duckett all hanging in there, tightly grouped. And, and we've talked about it all weekend, that this tournament could come down to the right bite. Jason Quinn and Steve Kennedy, another Alabama hopeful, needs to make a big move right now. These folks are going to have to make some superhuman efforts, but they are in here in the top 25. That's good going for a season with the Bassmasters. We talked about those mistakes out on the water. Skeet Reese, Randy Howell, all these guys, one fish can make the difference. A critical move can put you in or out on this final championship day. Who's going to make the right moves? Who's going to make the critical mistakes? We'll find out. Fans, this is day number one for the entire year. Championship day of the Bassmaster Classic. Take a look at the leaderboard, our ever-changing leaderboard. Kevin Van Dam and now D Gary Klein, who started the day in sixth place, has moved into second place. Terry McWilliams hanging in there as well. Skeet Reese, Boy Duckett, still got a tightly grouped group of five at the top of that leaderboard. Let's get you out on the water as quickly as we possibly can. Boy Duckett, the Alabama angler from Demopolis, here to do some damage. He has done it so far. And, and, and now we're seeing guys downshifting and 
going for the victory. Boy Duckett had been throwing a crankbait all morning. He wanted to get his limit of five fish. Now he's going for bigger largemouth black bass, flipping the very heavy matted vegetation, looking for that one key largemouth. Boy Duckett fishing in his first ever classic. He has been flawless so far through the three days of competition. Yeah, baby. That'll help. Good one there, buddy. I got the big ones on this side. Taking you back out on the lake, down from Paradise Point Marina. That's been our launch point all three days of this competition, following Gary Klein. This is his 25th Classic, 25 years in the Classic, best finish 2003, when he finished second place behind Michael Eichenau. And, and you're seeing guys bunker into their style of bass fishing. Gary Klein said, man, I am going to throw a jig from start to finish. That's what he's done. And we can't stress this enough. The guys that are throwing the jigs today, your, your Terry McWilliams, your Gary Klein, they're the ones that are catching better than average size fish right now. I haven't seen him yet, so I can't tell. That's a nice one. All right, looks to be another quality fish for Gary Klein. Moving up that leaderboard today. We're getting very tightly bunched at the top. Well, that's a beautiful fish. They're so much fun to catch. Skeet Reese, Auburn, California, been near the top all through this classic. He's had a few mishaps today, though, some lost fish that could cost him. You know, big. and Skeet is truly one of the stars of the Bassmaster Elite Series, but there's one thing that Skeet has not done. He is not a good closer of tournaments. There's five. <laughs> Skeet Reese with a limit right there. Been looking for that for a long time. Again, he lost a good one a while back. We always talk about the importance of that one fish, that and one fish. It's hammered Definitely. In. And Skeet Reese will tell you, he cannot stand all the top tens he has. You know, the guy has a load of top tens. He just doesn't finish the deal. Again, Skeet Reese now in fourth place. Boy Duckett right behind him. Terry McWilliams, our amateur am amateur angler from the Federation Nation. Gary Klein and Kevin Van Dam. So tightly bunched at the top, you may have to think about what happens in case of a tie. That would be a fish off tomorrow. Oh, no, Tommy. We don't want to think so much about that. Not we hope so we much. get a winner here today. Michael Iaconelli unable to break the top 10 as yet. Timmy Horton, Steve Kennedy, those Alabama hopefuls who are fading on this day three of the and, and, and I'm going to stress this. This tournament possibly come down to the one key bite. Some long shots coming in. They were Terry McWilliams, our Federation Nation angler, been since 1994. That was the only time a Federation angler won the Classic. A long shot coming in here in Boyd Duckett from Demopolis, Alabama. Not known by everyone, but he is known. In 1994, Brian Kirchhoff, a short order cook from Connecticut, who finished last the year before, ignored the odds and became the first and only amateur to win the Bassmaster Classic. Here you go, Roy. <laughs> Kirchhoff's stunning win on High Rock Lake in North Carolina proved anyone with a dream and the drive can compete and beat the world's best anglers. Tragically, just a few months after his remarkable win, Kirchhoff was killed in a commuter plane crash. He accomplished everything that he wanted to, but um, the impact that he had because of the life that he chose is probably more significant than had he not passed away. For the weekend angler, Brian Kirchhoff will always be an inspiration. The Brian Kirchhoff memory still strong with the members of the Federation Nation and man oh man, 
Does the Federation Nation have somebody to root for in this fight here today? Final day, championship day of the Bassmaster Classic. Look at him right there, Terry McWilliams, less than a couple of pounds behind our leader, Kevin Van Dam. Some strong, strong stuff out there. Mark Zona, I put it to you. How important is this? This is big for oh, all these grassroots is, I, bass fishermen. You know, I, I, here's the best way you can put this in a context right now. You know, Terry McWilliams, the best way to describe it is like when Boise State played Oklahoma this year, you know, Boise State got on the field and you're like, man, I just want them to show up and maybe score a touchdown. They came to play, and that is exactly what is happening right now. Terry McWilliams came to this classic to win it. And I'm going to tell you a little something about this guy. He knows exactly what he's doing. All right, Terry McWilliams, our amateur contender for the title of Bassmaster Classic champion. Get to him right now out on the water. He's been catching him solid all day long, as he has and all the way through this tournament. Give the guy credit right now, man. He left his waterfall he's been fishing. He's going for broke. He is trying to put this one in the bag. So I'm catching all those good spotted bass out there and that fighting the current, letting it work for him. Byron Belvick is on this one. Let's hear from Byron right now. Big news developing here on day three of Bassmaster Classic, and it's getting late, but behind me is Terry McWilliams, and he is catching them big. They say he's got 15, 16 pounds, unofficially third place. This is huge. When we got here, he was calling a three-pounder, calling a three-pounder. He took and let go of fish most guys would kill to have today. He is on them. He's catching them. He knows what he's doing. He's flipping a jig in the grass, looking for one more big bite to maybe make the biggest upset of the whole Classic. The story of a Federation angler right here winning the Classic in the back of Yellow Leaf Creek. Thank you, Byron. Now another one of our contenders in that bunch knotted there in the top five, Skeet Reese. He's got his limit now. He's looking for an upgrade. Keep him coming, boys. Keep him coming. Kids, it's gonna be real interesting to see what kind of weights in here. I love it when you call me Big Papa. These guys have an uncanny ability to know when things are getting tied out there, to know when they're closing in on the winners there. Kevin Van Dam, Skeet Reese, Gary Klein, and Terry McWilliams all nodded right there. And, at the, and the amazing thing, you just nailed it, Tommy. These guys all know they are contention for the victory. The next few hours are critical. Look at page two of that leaderboard. We find ourselves a Michael Iaconelli, and they're never able to bump into that top ten so far today. Half an hour's fishing time left to go. Remind you again that all these weights you're seeing right now are unofficial. They don't become official until weigh-in time. And as you can see, the weigh-in is fast approaching. All the pageantry, all the excitement of the weigh-in is coming up. we got plenty more coming up before we get there, too. So stick around. Half a million dollars on the line, and I'm in contention to win this game. Tell you what, folks, two of the sport's biggest stars headed for a classic showdown on that weigh-in stage, Skeet Reese and Final day of the Bassmasters Classic 2007, Lay Lake, Birmingham, Alabama, and we're getting down to the final minutes of fishing. We've got a log jam on top of this leaderboard. Take a look at the top five spots there. Kevin Van Dam came into this day with the lead. He's just pounces away from Skeet Reese, right on his tail. Gary Klein in there. Terry McWilliams, our Federation Nation angler, our amateur angler in there. And Boyd Duckett, we haven't heard from him in a while, but he's right in that bunch as well. No one with a clear advantage. Let's get out on the water. Take a look how the day has gone for Kevin Van Dam. Started his day with the lead, but he's not been able to put any distance between himself and his pursuers. He got underway fairly quickly this morning, didn't take much searching to get out there and get things going. And early on, about 7.08 a.m., he hooked up with his first fish. Using the moving baits, he got going a little bit better later on after the 8 o'clock hour. He had three fish in the boat. And actually, after that, caught four fish in an hour and a half. Nothing of big size. Right, uh, Tommy, and something needs to be noted right here. Kevin came out of the gates firing this morning. He had a limit by 9 o'clock. Life was good. Things were going great. Since then, we have not heard a word from Kevin since noon. He has not caught a bass. Right now, Kevin Van Dam is losing the Bassmaster Classic. 
Over to Skeet Reese, we saw him have a very slow period at midday. After lunch, it started to heat up a little bit for him, and he's still trying to get upgraded. <laughs> I'm wound, wound up right now. Who needs crack when you got tournament fishing? Yeah! Now we're cooking with gas, baby! Turn up the heat, kids. Wow! <laughs> and that bass right there, unofficially, put Skeet Reese in the lead. If you look at him right now, he totally thinks he has won the Bassmaster Classic. Take a look at that leaderboard right now. That reflects a Skeet Reese right on top of that thing right there, a shade ahead of Kevin Van Dam. Remember, all these weights are unofficial. We will not have the official weights until we reach the weigh-in, and that is coming up upon us very, very fast. Gary Klein not out of it yet, despite the shortness of time. Ditto for Terry McWilliams. Ditto for Boyd Duckett. These guys have all got a shot at winning the top position in the world of fishing and the half a million dollars. We said it all weekend, Tommy. It was going to come down to the last minute. There's 20 minutes left. It's just about game over. We haven't heard from Boyd Duckett in a little while. We're going to get back out there and take a look at him. He may have a surprise for us that could blow this thing wide open. The man from Demopolis, Alabama, is not done with his fishing yet. The city of Pittsburgh provided a spectacular backdrop for the 2005 Classic, but the Three Rivers also proved to be the toughest fishery in Classic history, with the biggest bass caught weighing less than two pounds. It's a survival deal. It's a deal whoever can catch, you know, five fish or the, the most fish every day is going to win this tournament. After finishing as the runner-up in two of the last three years, second-round leader Aaron Martins hoped this would finally be his year. I just had a bad tournament, really, to tell you the truth. I lost more fish than I ever have, and I actually hooked fish and lost them, so I, I should have won it, but that's fishing, you know? In the end, Michigan's Kevin Van Dam edged Martins by a scant six ounces. Yes! Good fish. His winning weight was an all-time low, but Van Dam was now a two-time Classic champion. 2007 Bassmaster Classic on Lay Lake near Birmingham, Alabama. No angler has ever won the Classic in his home state. Boy Duckett of Demopolis, Alabama has put himself in a position to do just that. Had the lead after day one and he has stayed with the leaders all the way through it. The fan crowd left too quick, didn't they? They quit believing. It's hard to get a bite, but man, this is the way to hook a big one this time of year, you know it? Wind's blowing now. So that wind blowing against it, it makes the worst thing it does, it makes the mats tight and there's no gaps. You'd have to swim off with it, you'd never feel a bite. It's kind of wind, would you? It just didn't happen for me yesterday, did it? I'm not really sure, I can't really tell on all this wind whether that's a bite or not, but it, I thought it was. what I needed right there. Lord, yeah. That's a good one there. Let's stay on. Stay on, big girl. My hands on that. Yeah, baby! That's what I'm fishing for. Woo! Yeah! Oh, that's what I needed right there. Oh, look at that beautiful fish, would y'all? Look at that beautiful fish. all day for that one. Whew, I tell you what, I can set you down right there for just a minute. God, fish is seven pounds. 
Oh, God, that's what I needed. I can have run at the 2007 Bassmaster Classic right here. We've said it all along. The man that fires the biggest shot will put this one away. And right now, that man is the biggest underdog in this event, Boyd Duckett. Look to be very near his last cast of the day, and that fish comes through for Boy Duckett. Take a look at the leaderboard right now. Boy Duckett right behind Skeet Reese in this race. Remember, these are unofficial, unofficial weights here. We have an error factor of plus or minus as much as two pounds. All of these anglers, every one of them you see in the top five, has got a shot at the trophy. We're coming up on that very, very quickly. I think it's going to be pretty close in the end, though. We're all going to be, you know, within a pound or so. And it's looking to be a shootout. <laughs> there ain't no doubt about it. I'd like to have two pounds and six ounces more than the rest of the guys, because I was behind that part. Ah, just get us on stage and let us know. Everybody's waiting. The tension is thick, and we're about to get this weigh-in started. We will make it official and crown a classic champ when we come back. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the Bassmaster Classic is brought to you by Triton Boats. We take America fishing. The all-new Toyota Tundra, the truck that's changing it all. Berkeley, get in the zone. And by Advance Auto Parts, providing car care know-how to protect your investment. Got a heads up for you, 9 a.m. Saturday morning, March 3rd on ESPN2. The full story of this 2007 Bassmaster Classic, the way it went down here on Lay Lake, just outside of Birmingham, Alabama, in full detail. Some special dimensions you won't see anywhere else. You definitely want to write that down. The full Bassmaster Classic show, 9 a.m. March 3rd on ESPN2. Definitely check that out. Meanwhile, in the convention center, congratulations to Tom Bedell of Berkeley and Company, the recipient of the 2007 Bass Outstanding Achievement Award for all his conservation efforts through the years, all his help building up the Bass Angler Sportsman Society and getting young people involved in the sport. Congratulations to Tom Bedell. Well, we're about to that moment now. Here it way is. In. Hey, who hasn't sat in a boat? What dedicated fisherman hasn't cast a lure out there and said, hey, I would like to be the guy rolling in on that boat? Oh, the Bass Master Classic on the final day, championship Well, this is day. the moment, and, and, and more so than, man, these guys have really worked for the last year to get to this point. These guys today have worked their entire life for this moment right here, and the most brutal feeling is sitting backstage and looking at five other guys that can take you down. Absolutely. Now, we got a tight knot, especially the top three or four places, and we know that our uh, our estimates are have a pound or two uh, leeway either way. We don't know exactly what's going to happen right. in there. We could even have a tie ball game. That would be a fish off tomorrow. We're kind of hoping against that. But let's get out into the way-in. Let's get to the Birmingham Jefferson Convention Center. Take a look at the crowd. Take a look at the action that's going on out there right now. One of the most raucous crowds in all of sports. Each one of these folks in every seat has got their favorite, and they are getting ready to go here. MC Keith Allen's got them all whipped into a frenzy out there, and the super moment has come as they present the Super Six, the six finalists in this competition. And our first angler is Terry McWilliams. Five pounds and three ounces. Time to load the Triton hot seat with our Federation Nation member, Terry McWilliams. And Terry was one of the stars of the day, the Indiana Federation Nation, with one of the biggest fishing days of his whole life. A big limit of fish right here. 17 pounds, six ounces. Terry McWilliams, top of the food chain. And that catch right there would put Terry McWilliams in fourth place with 45 pounds, three ounces. Wow. Gary Klein sits 16 pounds and 9 ounces away from the lead. 15 pounds and 10 ounces. It's going to put you in the number two spot right now, Gary. Reach on in. And show us Gary Klein, an outstanding final day. Coming very close in yet another classic. His 25th classic, fifth place, 44-5 for Gary Klein.
Ladies and gentlemen, one of Alabama's favorite sons, Timmy Horton. Well, yesterday, Timmy Horton had a pretty unbelievable thing happen to him. Actually, two really good things happened in Timmy's world. Two fish as you sit 15 pounds and change out. You're only going to go 6'5 today. Hold those two fish up right now, Timmy. What do you say, ladies and gentlemen, out of Muscle Shoals, Alabama? Bit of a disappointing day for Timmy Horton, Muscle Shoals, Alabama. He started his day, too, so great with that twofer right there. Two fish in the boat to get things started. Faded on the final day. And now to Skeet Reese of California. He surged at the end of this final day. This is going to be real close. Ounces are going to determine this tournament. Ladies and gentlemen, Skeet Reese looking for 16.5. 15 pounds, 14 ounces. Skeet Reese right there, 48 pounds, 4 ounces, not enough. We go now to Boy Duckett, Cinderella story for this guy from Demopolis, Alabama, 46 years old, competing in his first ever Bassmaster Classic. pounds and 13 ounces after two days. He sits 14 pounds and seven ounces out of the lead. Oh my goodness. Dude, that's a football with pectoral fins. Here we go. 14-7 for the lead. Get on it, Trip. 14-7 for the lead. 17-13. Boy, Duncan moves to the top of the food chain. favorite son. So Boy Duckett takes over the lead. That is powerful stuff. That huge fish in the final hours of fishing on this tournament on Lay Lake, the Bassmaster Classic. One man left standing. The man with the lead coming into this, Kevin Van Dam. No, 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 no. You sit down and relax, too. Why don't you go ahead and head to that Triton Live Well and see what you got out there. Kevin Van Dam. Yesterday's Berkeley heavyweight. Cause you woke up in the morning with initiative to move, so I make it harder. Think about it, so many people do be cool and look smarter. This is gonna be close. This is gonna be real close. Well, you know what? See that NASCAR hat change? I did, I did. Hey Trip, you know what? Before we weigh these fish, Boyd, why don't you come on up here and take a look at this. One of these two men is going to become the 37th Bassmaster Classic champion. Kevin Van Dam needs 15 pounds and 12 ounces to earn his third classic title. Here we go, Trip. KVD looking for 15, 12. 12 pounds, 5 ounces. Boyd Duncan in the record books. Classic champion, right at home in Alabama. Phenomenal champion out of Kevin Van Dam. Congratulations, Alabama! Time to get loud for Boy Duck out of Demopolis, Alabama. 2007 Bassmaster Classic champion. this tournament trying to keep my head on you got guys like Kevin Van Dam and you know Gary Klein and Timmy and Skeet Reese and you know Terry Scroggins I mean these are just the guys that that you look up to but uh, to get a chance to fish with them and and actually win this thing and right here in Alabama I mean it doesn't get any better than this Boy Duckett a huge underdog at the start of the day and a hero at the end of the day
46 years old, Boy Duckett from Demopolis, Alabama, came in here. If you'd have predicted him before this tournament started, you'd have raised a few eyebrows. Everyone knew he had a good deal of local knowledge. Everyone knew he was a darn good fisherman. He's had success before in the world of bass fishing, but man, he gets it this time. Take a look at the payout, a half a million dollars to Boy Duckett. And you talk about this being an all or nothing thing, look at spot number two. Well, let's talk about that one bite in the last hour of the tournament being worth about $450,000. I'm going to tell you something. I become real close with that bass tonight. They said it time and again. Nobody remembers second place in the Bassmaster Classic. So write it down. Ski Reese was second in 2007. And we got him. Boyd Duckett, 2007 Bassmaster Classic champion, joins us on the set. How does it sound for you? Boy, it sounds fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Excited. They say it's one fish that wins a classic. Was it that the case in your classic? You know, it was. I guess I could, you, at about two o'clock today, I caught a six pounder. I, I knew I had. I was I was flipping, and I knew I needed a big bite, and uh, finally caught that one about two o'clock. So I thought I had a real shot at it. Throughout the entire weekend, you know, Tommy and I, we, we sat here, we tried to break this whole thing down with all the competitors. If if you can really break it down for yourself, the key to victory, what was it? The key to victory for me, I think, was to really be open minded. Uh, you know, I went into this thing. Our practice was so bad with the weather, and uh, I wanted to go in. I wanted to stay calm, number one, because it's the Bassmaster Classic, first one I've ever been to, and just follow my intuition and try to try to remain focused. And I was able to do that all week. So. It's been an oft-repeated story. You never wanted to attend the Classic. It's been held in your area for many, many years in the past. You never wanted to come to the Classic until you could compete in it. And you, you held true to your promise. Seems to be the magic thing, huh? Well, I'm telling you, I did, I did, and that was so hard, you know, because it keeps getting bigger every year. And with me fishing bass, and so too, I wanted to go to them so bad, and everybody invited me, and I had to tell them, well, you know, I promised I'd never go until I got to fish in one, and they thought I was stupid, but hey, here I am. <laughs> one last question. You win the Classic. What is next for Boyd Duckett? <clears throat> well, next for me, I'm fishing the Elite Series. I'm a full-time professional angler, and I intend to win Angler of the Year. Well, you got a little spending money. Yeah. yeah. Walking around. Got, there money. you no go. Got it. A sweet trophy. That's right. Boyd Duckett, 2007 Classic Champion. Thanks very much. You're very welcome. All right, the final leaderboard is in the books now at the Bassmaster Classic 2007. There he is, your half million dollar winner, Boy Duckett, Skeet Reese in second place. We go down through there, a Mike Worm, a Mike McClellan. These guys tried hard. It says a Come lot on. that they made the top 25. Let's still give it up to Terry McWilliams, our Federation Nation angler, man. Huge tournament. Yeah, big, big stroke for the Federation Nation right there, and it couldn't have had a better representative than Terry McWilliams, but our representative for the World Championship of Bass Fishing for the year 2007 is Boy Duckett your quick thoughts about this man. I'm going to go back to exactly what I said when this whole weekend started, that one angler was going to have to touch perfection. Today, that angler was boy duck. It blew the field away, really, at the end of it. And more so than anything, you know, we sit there and we hammer on the money and 500000 here, 500 there. You cannot take the classic away from Boyd Duckett. It's his for good. All right, the classic is in the books. Congratulations one more time to Boyd Duckett. As we leave you, say goodbye. Thank you for joining us here today. Let's take us all back out to Lay Lake and take a look at some of the great action we experienced out there. Lay Lake was a perfect venue for awesome. the classic. Definitely one of the best classics ever. It was probably the most diverse classic we've ever seen. Seen some highs, seen some lows for yeah, all of these. Yeah. We all have, Tommy. <laughs> well, haven't we ever? But they've all pushed through. They've all persevered. Some sad moments for guys like Gerald Swindle, disqualified. He didn't want to have to leave this classic. Hey, how about that big push and the last final day by Dean Rojas to open the final day? It comes down to a guy who was really an underdog coming into this thing, making it happen. Your $500,000 winner, Boyd Duckett, 2007 Bassmaster Classic Champion.